सो गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर गोपाल दत्त आई एम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द स्कूल ऑफ वोकेशनल स्टडीज उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हल्द्वानी इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एक्ज एम एल एंड एक्ज एम एल ट्रीज एज इट्स द पार्ट टू ऑफ दिस सेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल डिस्कस विद यू द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स इन दिस सेशन वी विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लोर एक्स एम एल स्कीमा डॉक्यूमेंट ऑब्जेक्ट मॉडल एंड एक्स एम एल ट्रीज बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस सेशन जस्ट रिकॉल द लास्ट लेक्चर इन दिस सेशन इन द लास्ट सेशन वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ एक्स एम एल कंपोनेंट्स एंड की टर्मिनोलॉजीज यूज इन एक्स एम एल एंड ऑल्सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग द डिफ्रेंसेस बिटवीन एक्स एम एल एंड एच टी एम एल सो लेटस स्टार्ट वॉट इज एक्स एम एल स्कीमा डियर फ्रेंड्स एक्स एम एल स्कीमा ऑफन रेफर्ड टू एज एक्स एम एल स्कीमा डेफिनेशन इन एब्रीविएटेड फॉर्म समटाइम्स दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज एक्स एस डी इट इज अ स्पेसिफिकेशन यूज फॉर डिफाइनिंग द स्ट्रक्चर कॉन्टेंट एंड डेटा टाइप्स ऑफ एक्स एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट्स द एक्स एम एल स्कीमा प्रोवाइड्स अ वे टू डिस्क्राइब द एलिमेंट्स एंड एटीब्यूट्स दैट कैन अपीयर इन एन एक्स एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट एज वेल एज द रूल्स गवर्निंग दियर रिलेशनशिप एंड डेटा टाइप्स द एक्स एम एल स्कीमा इज यूज टू वैलिडेट एक्स एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट्स इंश्योरिंग दैट दे कन्फर्म टू अ स्पेसिफाइड स्ट्रक्चर एंड डेटा टाइप कंस्ट्रेंट्स एन एक्स एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट विथ करेक्ट सेंटेक्स इज ऑल्सो नोन एज वेल फॉर्म्ड एन एक्स एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट वैलिडेटेड अगेंस्ट एन एक्स एम एल स्कीमा इज बोथ well formed and valid so something more about xml schema i am going to share with you all the xml schema are more powerful than document type definition because xml schemas are written in xml only xml schemas are extensible to additions they are they also supports different data types the xml schemas also supports name spaces now the question arises why we use xml schema what is the benefit to use xml schema xml schema is used by the xml file to carry a description of its own format this is one of the reason again the next one is xml schema is used by the independent group of people can agree on a standard for interchanging data this is again the the thing that's why we used xml schema and xml schema is used to verify data so there are some key components about xml schema i think the learners should have well understanding and a good knowledge about such key components which are used in uh, xml schema the first one is elements and attributes xml schema allows you to define elements and attributes that can appear in xml documents you can specify the name data type and occurrences occurrence constraints for elements and attributes such as minimum occurrence and maximum occurs the next point which is very important to understand complex and simple types xml schema supports complex types for defining elements with child elements and simple types for defining elements with textual or atomic data complex types can have child elements while simple types specify the data type of an elements content so that is the difference between complex and simple types next one is restrictions and facets you can use restrictions and facets 
to constrain the values of simple types for example you can restrict an element to only allow integers within a certain range the key and key ref constraints in xml schema that supports key and key reference that is called key ref constraint to define relationship between elements in xml documents these constraint are used for maintaining data integrity in a uh, xml schema data integrity is a important factor we should think about it and uh, try to to maintain the integrity for such types of data now the next component which is again a uh, useful that is name space xml schema can be associated with xml name spaces allowing you to create schema definitions for elements and attributes within a specific name spaces another one is import and include you can modularize xml schema definitions by using the import and include mechanisms such mechanisms allows you to reuse and organize schema components so we should try to reuse and organize your uh, you know xml schema components and the last one which is annotation you can add documentation and comments to your xml schema definition using annotations this is useful for providing human readable descriptions of x of schema components or can say xml schema components annotations are very useful for understanding for the better understanding of your designed xml schema the developer or any other you know designer can understand what you have mentioned what you have written with the help of proper annotations so it's my advice to all the learners whenever you are going to to design uh, to developing xml schema you must explain your you know line of code so now there is a simple example which defines xml schema this this example defines the set of uh, the line of codes defines the simple xml schema i think you are going through with this this uh, set of uh, uh, you know line of codes in this example the xml schema defines an element called book you can define anything else uh, but in this example we are trying to explain the element that is book with child element called title author and publication year it also specifies their data types either string or integer and their occurrence constraints which are required or non required i think in this case all are required so just think about it this uh, uh, simple schema definition how can we explain this you know this example the xml schema validation tools can use this schema to check if xml documents adhere to this structure and data types data type constraints if an xml document doesn't conform to the schema it will be considered invalid that is the point it should be noted xml schema is widely used in various applications including data interchange configuration files and defining the structure of xml documents in web services and apis apis stands for application programming interface it plays a crucial role in ensuring data consistency and interoperability in xml based systems now go we are going with a, a next title that is xml document object model in a abbreviated form that is called dom dom so just start uh, to understand what is dom how that is helpful in defining in preparation of uh, you know creating you know xml documents so as dom defines a standard for processing and handling documents according the w3c dom 
W3C DOM is a uh, it is a platform and uh, you know language neutral interface that point to be noted DOM is a platform and language neutral interface that allows programs and scripts to dynamically access and update the content structure and style of a document I think that is the key definition about the XML document object model or W3C DOM is a it is a platform we can say which is language neutral interface and uh, which allows programs and scripts to dynamically access which are the things you know to update content to you know structure of the document and style of a document so the XML DOM defines a standard way to access and process XML documents in that case the XML documents are accessed through the document object model it also represents an XML document as a tree structure where the HTML DOM defines a standard way to process and manipulate HTML documents it means with the help of HTML DOM someone can define you know to manipulate HTML documents the understanding to document object model is very important for anyone working with HTML or XML all XML elements can be accessed through the XML DOM document object model the XML document object model is a standard way to to get change add and delete XML elements now there is a very simple example which elaborates how the document object model works in that case in this example uh, you know loading an XML file named book.xml this example reads books.xml into you know XML docs and retrieves the text value of the first title element in books.xml so I think you are seeing with the help of this PPT there is a simple example through which we are accessing the elements of XML with the help of document object model uh, in the next slide we will explain this example so you can understand what type of you know you know elements we are accessing through the XML DOM see the first of all XML DOC there is used the XML DOM object created by the parser and another one is you are seeing in the code block get element by tag name inside that uh, double quotes we mentioned title then the position is mentioned there at it denotes uh, what it denotes the first element you know title element if you mention there is zero you will write next one that will you know define the next level of you know element is called and the child node the first child of the title element that is called child node and the node value the value of the node in the text itself so uh, that is the simple explanation of document object model and how to access the elements these are the you know things uh, through which we can access the uh, you know elements of XML document now we are here to explain the properties of document object model you know there are some of the typical DOM properties you know document object model in an abbreviated form that is called DOM so if I will use DOM the word DOM or document object model you must not confuse both are interchangeably used in this session so first property is node name another one is node value another one is parent node another property is child node another property is attributes so I think in this presentation I have explained what is the meaning of XYZ dot node name so in that case in the list xyz is a is a node object so your object you can replace this xyz with the help of your object so typically i have used xyz and uh, 
we can access through this you know node and the property name the child node the attributes the parent node the node value and the node name so that is the elaboration of you know xml dom properties now come with the next slide there are uh, some of the typical dom methods so i have mentioned three methods there at so how such methods work in a you know document object model with the help of this example you can mention there at uh, look that uh, ppt again in that case xyz i have mentioned in a in a note in a footnote this xyz denotes node object so the first method is get element by tag name this is one of the method which i have used in the xml dom another one is uh, you know append child another one is remove child with the help of this uh, this uh, you know such kind of methods uh, you can maintain you can you know edit remove your uh, you know uh, document you know, xml document so i have elaborated all these things in this session and uh, now we are uh, about to discuss you know xml trees as the name implies trees it's uh, it's like a tree structure so just think about xml trees how the, the such xml trees are you know utilized in a xml document i have uh, explained in this session now come with this this slide uh, about to xml trees an xml document has a single root node the first thing which should be remembered always the all the uh, you know xml document must have a single root node so that the tree also should have a single root node the tree is a general ordered tree a parent node may have any number of children a child nodes are ordered and may have siblings an xml document consists of elements attributes plus some other details such as textual information name spaces processing instructions and so on there is a simple example which elaborates you know the xml trees is a simple architecture is defined is an abc that author name and you know title and some you know uh, key things uh, key information about the you know that author is mentioned there at so look at that in xml all tags are you know user definable that is very important like unlike html there are predefined things predefined tags in html in case of xml the things are not predefined it's a user defined you can define you can create your own text as per your need so in case of xml all text are user defined defined or freely definable in the above code we have defined in the last uh, ppt in the presentation the slide we have defined text named article title and author all text start with a start tag and uh, and with a end tag elements in xml documents what kind of elements may be available in a xml document and should have a tree structure element can have a name and a content elements may be nested elements may be empty as defined like this is an example of empty you know element elements content is typically a passed character data is called pc data example strings with uh, you know special characters and or nested elements or mixed content means both the things are available each xml document has exactly one root element this is very important each xml document has exactly one root element and one and forms a tree obviously if someone having only single root so it will form a you know tree structure elements with a common parent are ordered so in that case elements may have attributes you know like in a start tag that have a name and a value we have explained in last session or in this session also each element should have a name or id and a value uh, if someone uh, do not have value that is called empty element for example the element section has a attribute number whose value is 1 as mentioned in this example the differences between elements and attributes are that only one attribute with a given name
per element can be defined but an arbitrary number of sub elements can be defined for an element moreover elements have no structure they are simply a string while elements can have sub elements with the help of example i have mentioned there is a person this is again a you know uh, element having the value is you know, attribute name is born so mention the amin das is a person that is explained there right so these are the things about you know xml trees so at the end of this session i'll conclude this session uh, by the learning outcomes uh, uh, we have tried we have tried to explain the xml schema and uh, xml document object model as well the uh, you know very little understanding about the xml trees with the help of root trees and uh, i hope so all these things uh, you know are, are useful for the learners thank you